My name is Sandy Rylander, and um, I've been working at NTAP for quite a while now. Um, a little bit about my background, I went to UC Berkeley and um, then started with IBM, worked for IBM for about eight years, and then quit and started doing some training. Um, started with WordPerfect, Lotus, and DOS, and then oh, over 20 years ago, started with the Microsoft Office Suite. And during the course of that time, uh, Microsoft came up with a tool called the Ribbon, which as you know, has many tabs on it. And it means that sometimes it's a little bit hard to find exactly what you're looking for um, quickly because you have to switch from the file tab to the home tab to the insert tab, etc. So not only is it harder to find, but it also takes more time. For instance, if I wanted to open up a new document or excuse me, start a new document or open an existing document, I would have to click on file and then I would have to click on open, etc. It takes a lot of time versus just having a tool right here on the main screen that will help me out. And so quite a few years back, um, Microsoft said, okay, since we're giving you this ribbon, the benefit of having this ribbon is that you can put so many more tools on it. And the disadvantage is that you have to go to different tabs to find what you want. So they came up with this thing called the Quick Access Toolbar. And I'm pointing to it right now on my screen. It's up here. It's placed above the ribbon. And it is the one place that you can always see the tools at all times. And so it's really helpful to have everything that you use most frequently, and even some of the things that maybe you just forget where they are on that ribbon. So I thought we would start by looking at the Quick Access Toolbar for Word, and then go to the quick access toolbar for Excel, and maybe even if we have time, look at the ones for Outlook. Word, Excel, and most of the Microsoft products only have one quick access toolbar each. Um, the only one that is different, that has multiples would, that we're covering today is Outlook. And that actually has three different quick access toolbars uh, that are used in different screens. So we'll take a, look, a quick look at that as well. So the quick access toolbar, a lot of people don't even know it exists because it's sort of hidden up here in the top left corner. And Microsoft puts so few tools on there for you to start with that people don't even realize that it's there or helpful to them. So one of the first things that I like to do with a quick access toolbar, since it's going to hold the tools that I use most frequently, I like to place it below the ribbon because why would I not want my most used tools to be as close as possible to my document? Not only that, but as I add tools, watch, as I add tools and they go across the screen, guess what's going to happen to my document name? It's going to vanish off the screen and then all these tools are going to block me from putting even more tools on the quick access toolbar. So if I want to have the full length of the screen to put uh, tools on the quick access toolbar, it makes much more sense to have it below the ribbon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the quick access toolbar and one of the places that allows you to customize the quick access toolbar is the down arrow right at the end of the toolbar. So you can click on that if you want to and then at the very bottom do you see it says show below the ribbon. Now if you don't want to remember the down arrow at the end of the toolbar. If you've ever taken a class from me before, you know the one thing that I ask you to remember if you remember nothing else from the entire class, and that is if you don't know how to do something, you're supposed to right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So if you don't know how to put the quick access toolbar below the ribbon, which is this right here, then what you would do is you would right click on the quick access toolbar. Why is it important that you right click on the quick access toolbar and not somewhere in your document, let's say? Well, right clicking always gives you help on wherever 
your cursor is pointing. So if I right click in the document, it gives me help on things I can do within a document. If I want to have help on things I can do with the Quick Access Toolbar, I need to right click on the Quick Access Toolbar. So that just makes sense. So I'm gonna right click on the Quick Access Toolbar and see is there anything that's going to help me have the Quick Access Toolbar below the ribbon. Well, if I look at the third item down, it says show quick access toolbar below the ribbon. So either way works just as well, but all you have to do is remember right clicking 99% of the time and it will always help you. So we're gonna say show quick access toolbar below the ribbon and notice it's just automatically moved it down here. Okay, so if you have the most recent copy of Office 365, then the first tool that you're going to see is the auto save tool. That's a function in the most recent release that will automatically save your documents um, without you having to. So if you accidentally close out of a document or anything like that, your document will automatically have been saved. If you don't have the most recent release, you probably don't have auto save there and that's fine. Maybe you have save, maybe you have some other tool. It doesn't really matter because in a minute we're going to learn how to customize this ourselves. Okay, so, but just to show you, if I point to the next button over, it says save. Okay, if I point to the next one, most of you, um, recognize that as undo. And then the next one is redo or repeat, all right? So uh, basically Microsoft hasn't given you a whole lot to work with. So one of the things that Microsoft does do is they give you once again, this down arrow that says, okay, these are probably some of the functions that you would like to use most. So let's say that's a true statement, okay? So let's say what we'd like, notice that automatically save is already checked and it's over here. Then save is next, undo and redo. Notice those are the ones I just told you a second ago. Um, but let's say we want the rest of them on here. So what you would do is just click on the ones you want. Now, as soon as I click on new, let's say, it's going to disappear. My new tool is going to show up and then I'd have to click on this down arrow again for open, for email. Email, by the way, allows me to email whatever document I currently have on my screen. It'll attach it and automatically put it into my Outlook um, email as an attachment, okay? Quick print, which is the same as just hitting the print, um, it'll just send it to the default printer, full document, one copy. Print preview and print um, allows you to, first of all, look at the document prior to printing and also do things like changing the page setup or changing the number of copies or whatever types of print options you would like to change. So often people like to have that up there as well. Okay, notice that it doesn't really look so much like a printer, it looks like a print preview tool. Okay, so we're gonna look at that in a second. In fact, we're gonna look at all of these in a minute, but we're just sticking them on the toolbar for now. Spell check, if you want spell check, spelling and grammar. Um, Read aloud, that's something new. Um, what read aloud does, it, it, it's very nice, if, especially if you, um, for accessibility, if you want Word to actually read back a paragraph to you or a sentence, you can click on read aloud and it, it'll read it back to you. I'm gonna leave that off right now. Um, also gonna leave draw a table off and changing between touch and mouse, I'm going to leave off. So for now, this is all I'm going to start with. And if you look at the handout that Sart was referring to earlier, on page two, I have a list of what I feel are very helpful commands in Word. Doesn't mean that uh, the same list is true for you, but I thought you gotta start somewhere. So I thought I'd give you a list of what I think would be really great to have on there, and then you can modify it in any way that you want, okay? But let's just look at this. Um, we're starting out with save, which is nice, um, but new comes way after save. Now, I kind of like to have things in an order in which I'm going to use it. So generally I'd start with a new document and then later I might print it and I might save it and all of those sorts of things. So I'd really like to change the order that these appear in. How would I do that? Well, 
if I were in a normal classroom situation, a lot of people in class would say, hey, just drag the button. And that's a great idea. The only problem is it doesn't work. And the only thing I can think of, the only reason I can think Microsoft would not allow that to work is that I think a lot of times you might accidentally drag buttons off the toolbar and accidentally create a situation that you don't want. So that isn't a possibility. Dragging is not a possibility. So then what would be your second thought? Well, I'm hoping a lot of you that might not know the answer, I'm hoping the answer you came up with right away is when you don't know what to do, right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So we're gonna right click on the Quick Access Toolbar. And notice there's something that says Customize Quick Access Toolbar. And isn't that what we're trying to do? We're trying to change the Quick Access Toolbar. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And so this, oh, go ahead. Question, Sandy. Yeah. Um, is, is the ability to move the toolbar different on a Mac? Um, we've got one question here that uh, they don't see the option on their MacBook Pro to move the ribbon toolbar below. That is such a great question. And if I were at all familiar with the Mac, I would be able to answer it. But that is, I'm strictly a PC person. So I'm really, really sorry about that. Okay. Um, I could try and look it up later, but I, I don't know off the top of my head. The interface for the Mac is quite different and often uh, the features are somewhat delayed on a Mac. Um, they're often- I'll do, a, I'll do a quick releases. search for it and see if I can find anything. If I can, I'll Terrific. pop it in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for that question. If there are any PC related questions, I would be happy to um, happy to help with those. So anyway, um, so let's look at this while we're here. Notice that first of all, over here, it says we're dealing with a quick access toolbar. So in case you accidentally uh, click on one of these other options, you're gonna wanna go back to the quick access toolbar. Then on the left, are the commands that you can put on the quick access toolbar. Whereas on the right, notice these are what you currently have on the quick access toolbar. So that's why it says, um, over here it says choose commands from, and over here is the um, customize the quick access toolbar. So this is where you're choosing from. Now in this choosing from, Notice that it says popular commands, which means you're not seeing a complete list of commands. You're only seeing what, maybe three dozen or so. Three dozen of what Microsoft considers to be some of the most popular commands that you might want on your quick access toolbar. So let's look at that. Well, let's look at that in just a second because the reason we came here to begin with was how do we move these tools around? So I wanted to have new above save. So if I look at this um, over here on the right, if I click on new, then I can click on this up arrow and notice now it's above save. Now, another thing that I kind of like to do is group similar commands together. And by grouping, I mean just putting a light line between commands that, that are similar. So for instance, if I look back up here at my ribbon, do you see how there's a light line here, which is grouping all your clipboard items? There's a light line here that's grouping your font items. Those are called separators. I would like to have a separator after the save. So if I click on save, if I now double click on separator, it's always going to put the tool that I double click on right below the tool that I have selected. So if I double click on separator, notice it puts it right after save. Now notice you're not seeing anything over here. None of these changes I'm making are you seeing. So um, I had a client once that made the toolbar exactly with the way they wanted it and they didn't see any of their changes, so they canceled out. Please don't do that. You don't see the changes until you hit OK. So even though we're not finished here, I wanna go ahead and click OK. So you can see that indeed, new is coming at the beginning, followed by save, followed by this really light line called a separator. And we're gonna put another separator after um, 
undo or repeat. So in order to do that, how am I going to get back to customizing my quick access toolbar? Well, I'm going to right click anywhere on the quick access toolbar and I'm going to say customize the quick access toolbar. Here we are again. If I want another separator under redo, I can just click on redo and once again, double click on the separator. So now I will have another light line over here. The problem is I would like open to be right after new. So how do I do that? Well, remember if I click on open, I can just click on my up arrow till it is where I'd like it to be. Email. Oftentimes after I've saved something, I would like to email it to someone. So to me, it makes a lot of sense to have it right after save. So I'm gonna move it up under save. Now, most people use quick print a lot. So I like it to be at the very end of my toolbar because it's really easy to access things at the very beginning and very end. It also makes sense to me that it would be after print preview. So I click on quick print and I move it down one. Now I certainly don't want to print prior to spelling, spell checking, nor do I really want to save prior to spell checking. So I'm going to move spelling and grammar above email. So to me, this makes a lot of sense. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on OK and see what it looks like. So now I've got starting a new document. OK, so I click on new and that just brought up a blank document. Open to open an existing document. OK, save. Spell check. Take this document, whatever document I have and send it in an email. So it should open up Outlook and put it in, a, in an email right there. See that document three is now ready to be emailed. Okay, undo, redo. This is print preview and print. So it's the same as doing file print, which allows you to change the printer, change settings, all of that sort of thing. And then just quick print, which will just send it to the last printer. Any questions on any of that so far? Okay, so let's look at some other things. By the way, even though I told you, you could right click on the quick access toolbar and go to customize the quick access toolbar. Another way of doing the same thing, remember this down arrow over here? You can click on the down arrow and you can go to more commands. I wish it says, wish it would say customize quick access toolbar, which it does when you point to it. So I'm not sure why they can't just make that the same verbiage, but they don't. So just know that more commands is how you get to customizing the quick access toolbar if you go to that down arrow. So now let's look at page two and on the right side, once again, it'll show you some of the um, tools that I recommend having in Word. And open and save are already here, okay? I also have save as other format. So let's look at what save as other format means. Well, first of all, let's see if it's even a popular command. I doubt it. There are not too many things that I like that Microsoft thinks are popular. So let's go ahead and see how we can get to save as other format. Remember, these were popular commands. I rarely stay on this screen. I almost always go to all commands. All commands lets you look at absolutely everything that's possible in Word. Then I click over on any of the commands here so that if I want to go to the S's, I can now, now that I've clicked on any of them here, I can type in an S and then I just need to scroll down. Now, some of you might say, well, why don't you just type in save as other format? Well, because as soon as I type in an A, it's going to go up to the commands that start with A. So it only lets you type in the very first letter of the command that you're looking for. But notice that here I've got save as other format. Now, if I hadn't clicked on save, if I just left it down here or hadn't clicked on anything, save as other format would go at the very bottom of the list and I would have to move it up. 
Instead of doing that, I'm going to double click to remove it, or I could just click on it once and click on remove, whatever you'd like. But by clicking on save first, and then double clicking on save as other format, it will put it right underneath save. It'll save you a whole lot of hitting the up and down arrow. So I clicked on save. I'm going to double click on save on other as other format and notice how it drops it nicely right below save so I don't have to move it. Notice also that it's got an arrow over here to the right. What that means is I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. What that means is it's going to have a little drop down when it gets to the quick access toolbar. So that way you know if it's just a tool or if it's a tool with a drop down. This drop down, the reason I like save as other format, it does several things. One, the top one says save the file as a Word document, which um, I think is not really put clearly enough. What it really means is let's say you have an old document, one that was created in 2010, um, Word 2010 or Word 2013, something to that effect. If you click on save as Word document, what it really means is it's going to save it and upgrade it to the newest file type. Okay, so it's not just saving it as a Word document, but as the most current kind of Word document. Saving as a template, um, it's really for use over and over again. We're not going to go into that right now. But what I did want to go into is this. To be able to save it as a PDF, if you want to save it as a PDF, all you have to do is click on this down arrow, click on Save as PDF, and it will automatically save it as a PDF. OK? So if that's something you use, great. If not, let's say you say, you know, Sandy, that might work for you. but I don't use that much. All you have to do is right click on the tool that you don't want, and then you should see remove from quick access toolbar. So it's that easy to add and that easy to take away from the quick access toolbar. Okay. The next item I have, if you look in the book, is close or close all. Okay. So the reason I like close is because in past releases, many years ago, I used to click on this X in the top right hand corner to get out of a Word document. The problem is you never know if it's also going to close you out of Word. If this is the very last Word document open, then clicking on this X is going to close you out of Word, which I didn't like. So by using the close tool instead of clicking on this X, it would only ever close me out of my document and not close me out of Word. So again, to customize this quick access toolbar, just going to right click, go to customize the quick access toolbar. I want close to be something I do after I save or let's say after I email. So I'm going to click on email and again, it's not a popular command. I'm going to go to all commands. Not quite sure why it's taking so long to switch, but anyway. Then I'm going to click so I can go down to the C's, scroll down till I find close or close all. And it's right here. So since I've already clicked on email, I know it's going to go right underneath email. So I'm going to double click and there's my close or close all and click on OK. So now if I want to close this document and it is my last document, if I click on this, close. No, oh, it isn't my last document. I have two open. I didn't realize. But notice it's just clicking on close. And now it would have been my last document. It would have closed me out of Word. But because I use this instead of the X, it only closed me out of my document. So I can click on new document now and I'm back in business without having accidentally closed out of Word. So why is it called close or close all? Well, if you've ever had um, four or five Word documents open. Let's see if we can get some other documents open here. Open up this one. Okay. And let's say this one. So I now have three Word documents open, correct? Because I have a blank document and in a second I will have, oh, 
interesting. Well, let's not do that. It's not connecting to where I have that document, so let's see what else I can bring up. Hopefully that'll come up. There we go. So now I have three documents open. Um, and I can look down here so that I can see there are three documents open, right? So if I just click on close, I'm going to have to do that three times, right, to click to close all three. But since I chose close or close all, this is actually a two function button. So if I hold my shift key down and click on it, it should close all three documents. And there they go. So if you're the type of person like I am that often leaves many documents open, it's a really neat little button that allows you to close as many documents as you have open at the same time. Now, often when I teach this, people get concerned that, oh my goodness, but what if I haven't saved a document? Well, if, it, if, you, if you haven't saved a document, it won't just close it without saving. It'll ask you first if you want to save yes or no, and it'll do that for each document that you have open, so you don't have to worry that it's just going to get rid of a document. Okay, so then we have email already. Um, but another one that I have in my handout is email as PDF. A lot of times I don't want to save a document as a PDF because when I do, and then the next day I want to modify it, now all of a sudden my PDF document is old and I have to go delete this other PDF that, or have lots of different versions that I don't want. So instead of saving documents as PDFs, usually the only reason I want something to be in PDF form is because I don't want the person I'm sending the document to to be able to modify it, but I still want to be able to modify it. So sending as PDF is such a cool tool that I love having it on here. So once again, I'm gonna right click, gonna customize the quick access toolbar. I'll see if that might be a popular command, but it isn't. So once again, I'll go to all commands. And it says email as PDF. So I'm going to go to the ease. Actually, you know, that's the hardest thing is to know exactly what Word calls it to know that to go to the right place. Are we back on? I accidentally muted myself. Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Yes, All we right. can. Perfect, thank you so much. So I'm gonna click on email because I want it to be right below there. I'm gonna double click on email as PDF, click on okay. And so now if I have this document and I wanna email it to you, but I don't want you to be able to change it, then you can see it's got this little red band around it that shows you that it's not just an email, but emailing as PDF. It will on the fly convert the document to a PDF document. Notice it's a PDF document so that you can still work on the document as a document, but the person receiving it is going to be able to get the PDF file. So I love that tool. And that tool isn't just available here. You'll see that it's also available in Excel, in PowerPoint, in all the different programs. So that's when I put in all of them. Okay. Um, now, Let's say that there is a command up here that you really like that you would like to have on your quick access toolbar. Do you have to go into modifying your quick access toolbar to get it on the toolbar? Well, the answer is no. So I like using my showing and hiding of non-printing characters quite a bit. So if you want that on your quick access toolbar and it's not, how would you put it on? Well, again, dragging is not going to work. So how would you do it? Well, you all know that if you don't know the answer to a question, it's always going to be to right click on whatever you don't know how to do. So I'm gonna right click on this tool and notice the very first thing it asks is, do you wanna add it to the quick access toolbar? That's what I do want. So I'm gonna click on that and notice it's down here. Okay, there might be others that you want like Format Painter. I'm gonna right click on that and add it to the quick access toolbar. What else do we have in there that might, uh, we already have spelling and grammar. Oh, screenshots and screen clippings. All right, I don't know if you're 
familiar with screenshots or screen clippings, but they're on the insert menu. There's screenshot. Okay, so if we want screenshot to be on our quick access toolbar, we can just right click and right click, that was left click, and add to quick access toolbar. And then screen clipping is way down here. So I can actually click on this tool, go down to screen clipping, right click, and add to the quick access toolbar. Now, some of you may be asking, I don't know what that does. Why should I put it on my quick access toolbar? Well, let's see what it does. Again, it's available in all applications. So let's say this was something that I wanted to put in my Word document. Okay, I've got this gorgeous formatted document here and I want to send it to you. So I go to my Word document and I don't, well, first of all, let's, let's see what screenshot does. So the first one was screenshot. So I'm gonna click on the down arrow next to screenshot and notice just because this document is open is a good enough reason for it to appear and all I have to do is click and in two seconds, I've got that screenshot in my document. Now that could have been a, an Outlook email, it could have been anywhere, but that's how easy it is to use inserting a screenshot. Even though inserting a screenshot is wonderful, there are times where you may just want this portion of the screen showing. You don't need to show somebody the ribbon and all of those kinds of things. So that's what screen clipping does. So you click on insert screen clipping it immediately makes your current screen disappear and it goes back to the screen that you were just on right prior to the screen that you're on um, now. So now it looks like my screen is locked up, it looks dull gray, but notice the crosshairs. The crosshairs say, hey, put me where you wanna start the clipping, hold your left mouse button down, and drag very carefully across where you want to end it. So you can make it as long or short as you want. Just don't let go until you've got everything that you want highlighted in that box. Then let go and boom. That's how easy it is to get an absolutely perfect screenshot from one application to another. Now it's really important that that Excel spreadsheet is the last thing you saw because remember when you clicked on insert screenshot it immediately minimized word and then went over to excel it just goes over to whatever you were last in so if you were last let's say on the internet and then in word and then i click on insert screenshot it's going to go back to the internet so just make sure that whatever you last saw is what you want to be able to clip okay so those are a couple others that I have on, um, let's see. Actually, I think the whole set is on page four in the handout. So let's go ahead and see what we've got so far. We've got auto save, open new, spelling, save, save as other format, close, close all, email, email as PDF, undo, redo, and then I have format painter. Well, format painter's in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna right click. So a quick question here. Yeah. So the screenshot function, does it only work with Microsoft applications or would it work to have any open screen? As far as what you're copying, any open screen, because remember just a second ago, I was on the internet and it worked oh, that makes fine. Sense. So yeah, um, as far as copying to, it would be from a, you know a Microsoft application because that's where the screenshot uh, is, but yes, you can copy from absolutely anywhere and into anywhere. Now, when you're in um, Outlook, if you want to put it in, let's say, an email, you're going to want to 
uh, make sure that you click in the body of the email because if I'm up in this area, you're going to see that the insert screenshot, which of course I have um, here as well because I use that a lot here, it will be dull gray. So you do want to make sure that you click in the body of the email to make sure that you can use it. But And here's the, my insert screen clipping right here. So I can click on it. It'll go to whatever I was last in, which happened to have been Outlook, do my thing, and it puts it right in the body. So good question, though. All right, let me get back to Word now. All right, so, oh, I must have accidentally said customize the ribbon. No big deal, because I just need to be customizing the quick access toolbar instead. Just click one below. And according to what I've got on page four in my handout, I wanted format painter to be right after undo and redo and the separator. So I'm going to just move that up. And after that, I have something called paragraph settings. Um, that may or may not be something that you use a lot in Word, but uh, let me go ahead and go to, let's see if it's a popular command. Oh, look at that. We finally got a popular command. So right after format painter, I'm going to double click on paragraph settings. Let's look and see what that does. Click on OK. So paragraph settings right here is all of the things that you can do with a paragraph. So it could be centering, it could be indenting, it could be spacing before and after, it could be double spacing, single spacing, all of those things are under paragraph settings. So if, you, if that's something you use a lot, you can put it there. It is right here if you click on paragraph and you click on the dialog box launcher, you'll get the exact same thing. So many people might say, well, why would I ever have it here when it's right here? That's a really good question. If you use this a lot, then the reason that you would put it here as well is because you may not be on the Home tab. You could be on the Insert tab, the Draw tab, the Layout tab. Any of those will not have this um, right here. So again, even though it may be on there, Format Painter, you may ask the same thing. Why would I put Format Painter on here when it's right there? Well, again, you may be in a different tab. So even if it's something you just use a lot, you may want to put it on the Quick Access Toolbar. Okay. Page Break Before. I don't know if that's something you guys use a lot or not, but there are times when um, I'm in a document and let's say this is a heading or something like that. And so I would like uh, this heading to always start on a new page. And so I could either go to insert and click on page break, which would put in a page break, or I can write on here, I can go to those paragraph settings. Oops, that's show hide paragraph. I meant to go here. And over here, I can say page break before, which means that this heading will always start on its own page. Click on OK and notice. So it's not that I just did a control enter or a page break like I did a second ago, but rather that this heading is carrying with it a page break, which is why it's got this little box over here is to let you know that there's a page break before. If I come back, and take that off, you'll see it jump back up to the prior page and no longer be on its own page, okay? So I'll let you decide whether that's something you use a lot or not. Same with paragraph keep with next. It keeps a heading with the paragraph below it. Um, now that you know how to do that. Inserting section breaks. Again, I don't know if you use section breaks or not. If so, that might be a good one to put on there and viewing field codes. The next two, if you work with tables, not sure if you work with tables or not, but let's say you do. I'm on the insert, I'm gonna just put in a table here. Oh, actually I'm gonna wanna have a lot more rows. Hang on. All right, so I'm going to just, I'm just hitting my tab. Actually, let's do this to make it a little faster. I just copy and paste a bunch of rows because I want to have at least two pages of rows, okay? And then here I'm just going to type in name. Oops, this is not the first page. 
Hang on, let me get back to the first page. Didn't realize how many pages I created. Whoa. All right. So I'm going to type in name, address, phone. Okay, so let's say, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these. Oops. There we go. So this is my table. Got room for name, address, and phone. The problem is when I go to the next, when I go to the next uh, page, I don't have name, address, and phone anymore. So I really like these heading rows to repeat on every page. So what a lot of people do is they just copy and then come down here and paste, which works really well until something happens like you have an, you hit enter or you delete a row or whatever. It's incredibly bad to just copy and paste headings from page to page because they will never ever stay put and you'll constantly be fighting that battle. So that's what um, the one that I have there, which is inserting a header row, that's what that will do for you. Now, certainly you can find it if you go to the table tab. Um, it's on the layouts, I believe, to insert header rows. But instead of having to find that, here, repeat header rows, instead of having to find that every time, you can just right click, add it to quick access toolbar. So now anytime you want to have a heading row, just click in that heading row, click on this, notice that that's clicked on that, and notice that the top of every single page will have that beautiful heading row. No matter how many rows I delete, it will always have the heading row right at the right place. So that's an incredibly useful tool, and that's one of the reasons I like to have it on my quick access toolbar. In addition, viewing grid lines. A lot of times these things here are called grid lines, but a lot of times when you're working with mailing labels and that sort of thing, you don't have printable um, grid lines. So let's go ahead and take the grid lines off. And so I'm just gonna come up here where it adds and removes grid lines and I'm gonna say no, no borders, if I can find it. No borders, here we go. So notice when I have no borders, do you see how difficult it is to even see that you have a table or where the lines are? So viewing grid lines allows you to see where the lines are without printing them out. And again, with labels, this is often how labels look and it's really hard to know when you're in a label or when you've gone to the next one. So by having this, um, if I go to my layout tab when I'm in a table um, and I say show grid lines or view grid lines, notice it's right here. Again, instead of you having to remember that it's on the layout tab and clicking on here, I'm just gonna right click, add to the quick access toolbar. And now whenever I'm in a table, if I wanna see those grid lines, it allows me to see them but not have them print out. If I go to print preview, which is this guy here, notice that you're not seeing them at all because they will not print, they're just for your guidance. Okay, so that's another helpful, helpful tool to have. Again, you can put these in any order you want. You can follow what I have in the book or um, put them in any, really any uh, order that you'd like at all. Building Blocks Organizer um, is another neat tool. I don't know if you've learned about uh, building blocks, but it used to be called um, Auto Text. And that is, you may have things that you like to save, um, pieces of text, like even Sincerely, or if you have any questions, please call. Any bits of text or huge paragraphs of text that you would like to save. You just type in whatever you'd like to type. Highlight whatever it is that you'd like to save, okay? And if you want to save it as a paragraph, go ahead and include that ending paragraph symbol with it. See that? Okay. And then you're going to go to Insert, Quick Parts, Auto Text, 
Save Selection to Auto Text Gallery. Now that is not the easiest thing to do, right? So right click on Save Selection, add it to your Quick Access Toolbar. Now anytime you want to save uh, a snippet of text, all you have to do is click on Save, Say, give it a name, like maybe this is the, if you have any questions, or just maybe I'll just name it questions, okay? It's going to be saved as an auto text, okay? In the normal file, click on okay, okay? And now anytime in any document, I'll start a new document, that I want to use that, I can go to insert, quick parts, auto text, and if I go down to questions, whoops, they're in alphabetical order. Oh wait, it's, uh, they're in alphabetical order, but they're done by, here's general. Let's see, it's down here somewhere. This was probably not a good place to, uh, here we go, to store it, because notice how I'm, here it is, questions. And there it is. Now you saw how much difficulty I had trying to find it, and that's because um, for NJP we've just we've created a lot of these quick um, quick access little snippets of text called quick parts. And so when you're creating a quick part, instead of just naming it like we did, okay, under quick parts, if I whoops, I don't have to go there. I can just click on save. Remember how I called it questions? But instead of letting it default to a general category, create your own new category and name it with an underscore so it's at the very top and maybe your initials so that you know that you created it. Instead of having it mixed in with all those others, I'm gonna click on OK, click on OK again. Now let's see how easy it is to find. I'm going to go to insert, going to quick parts, auto text. And you see that now, because I started SR with an underscore, it's above all these general ones and questions is right at the top. So super easy to find all of my stuff. So you can either just have one big one called underscore in your initials, or you could have one called underscore letter snippets, underscore pleading snippets, underscore whatever it is that you'd like to do to save these. So now the only cumbersome part is when I want to insert them, I have to go to Quick Parts Auto Text. Well, why not right click on Auto Text and add to Quick Access Toolbar. So now when I want to insert that snippet, it's always there. Click, click, and you're done. How cool is that? How much time have you saved? And you can save tables like that. You can save so many different things. And so you'll notice on my handout that after inserting auto text, I have inserting quick tables. Now, if you look under quick parts, you're not seeing quick tables, right? Quick tables would be under tables. So if you go to table, see quick tables here? So if, you, if you've saved some tables, then right click on quick tables and add to quick access toolbar and boom, they're right there anytime you wanna add a table. Okay, so if I look now at all the different tools that I've designed for Word, uh, or not designed, excuse me, but feel are really helpful in Word, you see that we have 99% of them on our quick access toolbar. And I could, if I wanted to right now, right click, customize the quick access toolbar and put them in any order I want. Now let's say you got this great quick access toolbar and one of your coworkers comes to you and says, oh my gosh, that is the best looking quick access toolbar. I would really love to have it. Or you have Word at home and you've created it and you don't wanna create it again. You say, gosh, I'd really like to take this home with me. Well, lucky you can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, once again, right click on the Quick Access Toolbar and Customize. But this time, if we have everything here the way we want, I can go down here to Import Export and I can say Export All Customizations. Then it will just ask me, where would you like to save it? 
Now you can either just leave the name as word customizations, or if you want, I put SR in front of mine for Sandy Rylander, but you don't have to, as long as you remember it was yours. Click on save, and then email it to yourself or email it to someone else, whatever, have them save it, and then they can come when they're ready, they can import it. Make sure that they save it out somewhere so that they can import it because they won't be able to import it directly from the email, but they can import it from their hard drive or wherever they saved it. Now, something that's really important to know is if you do this, when you go to import, it will replace all of your tools that you currently have on the Quick Access Toolbar. Now, it shouldn't be an issue because you saw how incredibly easy it is to add them back. But maybe you want to do a screenshot or something of the way your toolbar currently looks so that you can uh, easily remember which tools you'd like to add if there's if you care about um, having some of the ones on there that you that you had before. So again, all you have to do is export and then come back and import. Now, before class, because I knew that I was going to completely mess up my toolbar and I had it the way I wanted, I exported my quick access toolbar so that no matter what I did in class, I could then come back and I could import. And so I'll find out where I put mine. I put mine under business, Microsoft Office training materials, quick access toolbars, and I named it SR Word Customization. So I'm going to double click on that. And do you see where it says replace? It's not kidding. That's what I was just telling you. It's going to replace whatever you have, OK? So I'm going to say yes, because I do want my old one back. And now everything that I wanted on there is there. So I can click on OK. Before I do that, though, I do want to show you, do you see where it says reset customizations? Resetting all customizations will mean not bring you back to where you were a second ago, but bring you back to those three or four tools that Microsoft gave you to start with. So be really careful on that selection because it means you're going to have nothing that you wanted. OK, so I never use that one except when I'm teaching a class and I know that I'm going to bring my own toolbar right back. So I'm going to go ahead and click on OK. And now look at all these nice tools. These are all the tools that I've created that I like to have on my Quick Access Toolbar. OK. So does anybody have any questions on the Word Quick Access Toolbar? And is there anybody online that would like to know some of my thoughts for the Excel Quick Access Toolbar because that's where I was going next? The process of creating it is identical. Um, the process of moving it down below is identical. I would right click and I'd say move below the ribbon. OK, um, and because the process, I'm going to right click and customize the Quick Access Toolbar, and you're going to see it's absolutely identical to what we did in Word. So rather than um, taking the time, because we're running out of time, to do each one individually, I'm just going to go ahead and import. And click on OK, except it didn't. Let's try that again. Well, that's interesting. It says it's going to, but then it does. Oh. That's interesting. OK, so even though it didn't show up that all those were over on the right hand side, it still had done it, which is kind of interesting. I haven't seen that before. But anyway, it still worked, which is good. Um, so a lot of these, notice I try and keep them in the same order between programs if they are the same um, tools. So I have open, new, save, save as, just like I did in Word. 
um, email, email as PDF, close, undo, redo, all the same kinds of things that I had in Word. And then at this point, it starts becoming a little bit different because, of course, Word and Excel are different programs, right? So these are some of the things that I like in Excel. And um, unfortunately, I don't have the time. I don't think, to, well, I guess I guess I have the time to explain some of these. Let's go ahead and open up a, an, Excel, an Excel spreadsheet. Not where I wanted to go. So I'm hoping that some of you have had some experience with Excel and so making it a little easier to know what I'm talking about. So this first one um, I'm going to demonstrate. Notice that this is a total row. And so a lot of you probably know that to get a total, you use a function called the sum function. Um, if you're not familiar with Excel, then don't worry about it because these tools don't mean anything to you if you're not using the program anyway. But the sum function just says to add these uh, different rows, okay? And normally when you copy and you paste them, it will keep those formulas in there. The problem is, let's say you only wanted to send somebody those totals. If I go to a new um, spreadsheet and just put those totals in, you're just going to get errors because it can't, it's trying to point to those same cells that you saw a second ago, but obviously it can't, right? So because they aren't in here. So instead of just pasting, which is what you're normally used to doing, what paste values says is take those formulas that you saw a second ago, the equal sum, and just take what the sum was. So by pasting values, notice it's now put in just the numbers. So it allows you to move these to different places like an email or a different spreadsheet or whatever you want to do and replaces what were formulas with the data, the actual number or text or whatever it is. So that's paste values. This next one is called freeze panes. And what freeze panes allows you to do, let me show you here. When you've got something that spans multiple, um, multiple screens, as I scroll down the screen, notice you can't tell what's January, February, March anymore because it scrolls off the top. Okay, so what this freeze panes does is if I click wherever I would like to keep everything that's above and to the left, so I want these headings and I want these headings to stay on my screen, so I click here so it'll save everything above and to the left, and if I click on freeze panes and freeze panes, what it's going to do Notice it's got these lines now drawn above and to the left. So as I scroll down, do you see how nicely they stay on there? And as I scroll to the right, you see how nicely the ones on the left stay on there. Okay, so that's called freeze panes. I'm gonna hit undo. Another, another nice feature, get out of that. Another nice feature that um, let's see if I can find it here. A lot of times I may want to just work with this portion of my sheet. Maybe I just want to print that portion or whatever. This is considered to be a range because I have this blank row underneath. So instead of having to drag across this whole area, if I click anywhere in the range and click on select current region, it's going to select just the region that is surrounded by blank rows and blank columns. So I click in the region, click on that, and it will, excuse me, click on that and it will only select that current region, okay? This next one is called select visible cells. If you've ever done something like this, you've ever said, you know what, I don't want, um, 
whomever it is, I don't want them to see all the individual data. So I'm going to highlight those columns. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say hide. OK, so I only want to copy and paste this and send it to you. OK, I don't want you to see what I did each month. So I copy it, go to a new sheet, and I paste it. Well, gosh, what good did that do? I went to all the trouble of hiding it, and everything is still showing. So what happens when you hide, if you copy, it doesn't, it doesn't care that you've hidden it. So what you need to do is hide like we did, then select the region. And that's what this tool does. It says select visible cells. So it's going to select that first column and you can even see there's this light white line here showing you that it's gonna just select this column and this column and nothing in between. Then when you do a copy and you go to a new sheet, it's only going to bring in that first and the last column, okay? So that's what Select Visible allows you to do. That's this one here. This one allows you to see your formulas. Let me go ahead and highlight this and unhide. If I wanna see what formula is in here, I certainly can click on it and I can look up here, right? But if I click on this, it'll show me every single one so that if this one were accidentally wrong, like maybe instead of eight, it had a nine in there or something like that. Look at that E8, F9, whoops, shouldn't have touched my screen. G8, it makes it so easy to see where the error is because I'm looking at all of them at once, okay? So this is showing and hiding formulas. This one is clearing formats, so if I want to clear just the look, but I want to keep, because if I just press delete, do you see how it leaves the formatting? But clearing formats says, no, get rid of the formats, get rid of the look, okay? This just allows me to, it's just the summation tool. This one is super cool and probably the, um, well, I, I really like this because have you ever had a, um, sheet of data that you've wanted to enter, but you have to be really careful that it's right. So you look at your sheet of data and you, let's say the first number is 1500, or maybe it's longer than that, something like this. And now you're, so you look at your sheet, then you look back here to make sure that it's right. Then you look back at your sheet, you type in the next number and you keep going back and forth like that. That is incredibly time consuming. Wouldn't it be nice if as you typed or as you hit enter, it would read back whatever you just put in so that you would hear whether or not you typed something incorrectly and you could keep your eyes focused on the paper you're typing from. Well, that's what Speak Cells on Enter allows you to do. So you click on Speak Cells on Enter. And now no matter what I type, Can you hear that? So yes, I'm trying to have, figure out where it's coming from. Where it's coming from? It's coming from my computer. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, that's yes, what speak I, cells. I can that's barely hear it. But yes, yes. Oh, okay. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it's if I can very, very quiet. Can, okay, let's if, see if, if I can. If you put your mic closer to the, to the speaker. Oh, that makes sense. Okay, hang on just one second. Let me take it off my head. Did that help? Can you guys, did you hear it? Okay, well, it may be quiet because, just because of our technical, um, you know, just because I'm wearing a headset here, but it won't be quiet if you turn up your speaker. However, 
if you um, are sharing office space with another person and you like that other person, then please wear a headset when you do this because it may drive them crazy. But that speak cells on Enter. I think it's a wonderful tool. Um, and I just turned it off just by clicking on it again. Okay. The, this is just sorting A to Z, Z to A, so sorting ascending, sorting descending, um, filtering. So if you want to just, let's say you want to only see rows that have ice cream in them or whatever allows you to filter, take off the filter. Um, these are some programs that have nothing to do with anything you'd want to know about, but then set print area. If I only want to print, let's say this area, I can click on set print area and it will only print that area and then print preview and print. So they're all explained in the handout. Um, and we're sort of coming to the end of the time. So I wanted to respect that, but I also wanted to show you one other thing. If you're going to create um, a quick access toolbar in Outlook, there is one quick access toolbar here, okay? You can see. And if you click on new email, you'll notice it's a completely different one here, okay? And then if you read an existing email, it's a different one here. Why? Because depending on where you are, there are different things that you can do. And so I just wanted to make you aware that we're in Excel, in Publisher, PowerPoint, all of those have just one toolbar. In Outlook, you have three different quick access toolbars, and it's just dependent on what screen you're currently in. So no matter what application you're in, I find quick access toolbars. OneNote is another application. I use my quick access toolbars. I just take absolutely everything that I use a lot or everything that's difficult to get to or I have a difficult time remembering, and I put it on the quick access toolbar, and it is just incredibly helpful. And some of them you can't find anywhere else, like Speak Cells on Enter. You're not going to find that on any menu in Excel. Um, so, and there's another one in Word called Calculate, which is a cool tool that allows you to calculate uh, numbers. So it also gives you access to commands that really aren't accessible in any other way. So I in my opinion, the quick access toolbar is a huge productivity enhancement if you use it. So now I'd like to, for the last few minutes, open up to any questions anybody has. Is it that easy that everybody uh, understood it completely? It really is easy. I mean, that's another really cool thing about the quick access toolbar is it's so easy to use, to learn, to modify everything. Well, if there are no questions, I want to thank you so much for coming today, and hopefully this will enhance your productivity significantly.